All right, so, so uh, let, let's just get underway with uh, maybe a little bit of uh, conversation about your time at the University of Miami. Uh, what was it like coming from Guyana in uh, the late 80s? Uh, how did you come to choose Miami uh, as your uh, place of study? And uh, uh, what turned you on to economics? So I'll take all of them yeah. at once. Make, am I, is this? Yes. So my, I was born, as was said, and raised in Guyana, South America. And at the time I was contemplating my college choice, Guyana was a socialist country. It's no longer socialist, but it was at the time. Uh, to the extent that, that students went abroad to study, many did not. Most of them studied in what was then called the Eastern Bloc. Many of them did. So my classmates studied in East Germany, or they studied in what was then called Czechoslovakia, and many studied in Cuba. My father and mother had done courses here at the University of Miami years before. And, um, and so there was a vague, there was a connection. Yeah. I was telling a story about um, the, a, 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 a library in my country, uh, the John F. Kennedy Library, it was called. And it was established in the 1960s. Many such establishments were created in the, what was called then the developing world with the idea of exposing uh, persons or societies fresh out of colonialism to the American idea, if, if you will. I was a regular attendant to that place. I went there all the time. I was a big sports fan then and now. And I would go to read Sports Illustrated, which I devoured um, two years, three years in the past. I met a man there who said, you know, you, you should think about studying in the States and so on. You heard about the SAT, he said. Not really. Um, and with their encouragement, I took the SAT and then applied to Miami. And I received here uh, a scholarship without which I could not, forget about attending, I couldn't get into the country. One needed to demonstrate financial ability to attend. I received what was called a Sanford scholarship, I believe. And then shortly thereafter, I got, once I came here, I was made an RA in Pearson Hall, where I lived. Um, Miami was, for me, many things. There was first the first direct exposure to what, for me, was the West in all of its wealth. Um, it struck me as an ex ex extraordinarily luxurious and well-resourced, uh, rich society. So there was the collision with what was unfamiliar to me that was jarring in some way. It was also true, though, that I felt from the very beginning a certain acceptance here. I felt um, comfortable here. I felt um, welcomed. You know, my, my friends in the dorm came from dramatically different places than did I. My friend Jason Kimmel, I remember his name, uh, was, from, was from New Jersey, something. And he introduced me to music I hadn't heard before. You know, I introduced him to Bob Marley, and he introduced me to Steely Dan, which I didn't know and still love. You know, we listen to the Eagles a lot. You know. um, uh, and there were many, many other friends. I stumbled into economics. I came here as a, I was going to be a mathematics major, and my plan was to complete my mathematics study and go to medical school. That was more my mother's plan than mine. Um, I stumbled into an economics class, and it was fine. But with each passing day, I liked it more and more. I don't remember whether it was my first class or my second, but I had the good fortune to be in a class of Professor Phil Robbins, who's here. And I have said publicly in many settings that the experience changed my life's direction. I remember vividly sitting in the class and thinking, I don't want to do anything else. Um, and I haven't done anything else. <laughs> I haven't had a job since. Right. <laughs>